Trapped, am I, in cage of twisty wire, cold concrete. Prowl, rage, howl. Know you not that I am tooth and claw? See me hunt through bracken and bush. See me swagger across wild lands. See me glory at the edge of cliff. It's a Tasmanian tiger. Mm. As in what it looks like or, or a bit like a dog and a bit like a tiger. Because it has some stripes on its back. And it's long. And the dogs are usually more shorter. Mm, maybe in the bush. Mm, bush that people usually don't go into. Is that dead? No, it's sleeping in the sun. Is it in a cage? Can they dig? Why aren't they having babies? Where is, where is it? Who is it? And there was a little bit of a clearing, like a little where, where people would camp. And he said, you know, Rex, he said, see that little clearing in there? I said, yeah. He said, one day we was anchored in here and we've seen, we seen a family. Yeah, two, 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 like the two adults and, and two little fellas running, playing around there. And they ran onto the beach and disappeared up along the beach. And of course, they didn't mind the fishing boats because they, 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 they were used to them, you know. But they don't tell anyone. Ailing am I, in cage of twisty wire, cold concrete, mourn, ache, yearn. Know you not that my heart is a forest? Run with me through trees of stripply bark. Run with me over creeks of flickering fish. Run with me where the snow falls slow. Run.
Yeah, this would have been probably before the 20s. At that stage they were pretty rare, but they were still around. Yeah. They became really rare around 1912. They, they think they had a mass, like a disease, whether or not that's, or whether it was just the, the bounty hunting. It sort of hit a critical mass. But they... Shadow am I, in cage of twisty wire, cold concrete, thin, still, mute. But they, they, but they suddenly disappeared from the landscape as far as the, the bushmen were concerned. The, the numbers dropped really suddenly. That didn't seem to be explained by the bounty. In, in areas where the bounty wasn't. Seeking the mouth of the river, the arms of the mountains. now, hear the stones chant, the wind console. Dreaming, am I? See the big footprint and see how he runs. It's 1.7 metres from his back feet to his front feet, then another 1.7 the way he runs. You can see the back toe, 
The only animal that has that back toe is a tiger. He'll also trot like that. Now, in a book that shows a dog being like that, these were definitely not dog prints. Here's a tiger. See the big fat feet on him? And see how he has that bent? That's his long back foot. See how he has a bend? The kangaroo doesn't have that. And see, he's got a big fat foot. Yeah, that's from behind, he's running away. Yeah, some of them were, and some of them were other other sort of indirect things. But one that one that that I remember was um, my uncle Jim, who's now about ninety odd, I guess. He was. It was probably in the sixties, mid sixties, maybe even early sixties, and he was walking back to his car from sort of a, quite a long walk, maybe maybe five miles or four miles he had to get back to his car which was parked down the track which is now the Cradle Mountain Road I guess and he had this dog that he was really close to he had this dog for 20 years I think the dog lived for but they were very close and he went everywhere with this dog he took the dog everywhere and they were sort of inseparable and they were walking back along Bond Plain and it was, it was sort of twilight, dark, getting on dark. And this is a guy who spent lots of time in the bush and very comfortable, very comfortable in the bush. And his dog. And, and suddenly his dog came running, rushing in, against his legs really quickly and unexpectedly and was cowering, cowering against his legs, which the dog had never, had never done before and never did since. And I think my uncle knew, just knew straight away that they were being followed by a thylacine because he could, I don't think he could even see it, but the sense was so strong and the behaviour of the dog was very consistent with how dogs apparently being terrified of thylacines. And that was very consistent behaviour that they'd, they'd basically try and jump into your arms to get away from the thylacine. Yeah, they are very scared of them. So he knew this dog really well and, and he, he just... He just knew that he was being sort of followed at some distance by this by this thylacine. I think he called them hyena. Yes, well, they did. We, we, we went down to it was it's called Low Rocky Point, it's down the southwest, and and, and, and and it's a good anchorage for boats. And we were just anchored in there one evening, and this guy came up and he said, that, and of course I knew him because I know most of the fishermen down there. And just when you're only anchored as far as 50 metres off the shore. And he, there was a little bit of a clearing, like a little where, where people would camp. And he said, you know, Rex, he said, see that little clearing in there? I said, yeah. He said, one day we was anchored in here and we seen, we seen a family. Yeah, two, 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 like the two adults and, and two little fellas running, playing around there. And they ran onto the beach and disappeared up along the beach. And of course, they didn't mind the fishing boats because they, they, they were used to them, you know. But they don't tell anyone, as I said, because no one believes them.